Hi, today we are back with the NRF 53DK and uh, we will add uh, the two wire interface to our project. Our uh, slave two wire device will be the MPU 6050. We will uh, use it in the blocking mode and using callbacks. So we will read the three axes from the accelerometer and uh, print it through the console UART. So we can see on the terminal or in the plot the movement that we got on the x, y, z axis. The red one is the x, the blue one is uh, y and the green one z. Something like this. So let's take a look at the project. Okay, so before we start the project that we got, uh, let's take a look where we can find the, the samples for the drivers. So this is the root folder for the Nordic SDK. And uh, let's take a look what we got in modules, hall, Nordic, and the NRFX drivers so samples and in SRC we got folders for the different uh, samples of peripheral use so uh, adding the two-wire interface uh, it's a good reference to take a look what we got in those uh, folders the sor source code right here but now let's just simply edit manually. So the first thing that we got to do is to open up the kconfig and in modules we are looking for whole Nordic and NRFX drivers and from the list we have to select the two-wire interface master one instance. Um, you have to use the first, uh, second or third instance because the instance 0 is already used by the UART so something else has to be selected so we select the first instance apply and we can add the include right here so you have to use the brackets here uh, show that you have uh, the drivers in the uh, folder that you got the uh, Nordic SDK so something like this and now we go to the place that we got the structures for the configuration. So this holds up the uh, pin numbers, the frequency, and so on. Uh, this uh, structure holds up the pointer to the register, of the hardware, and also a variable for a index for the uh, driver right here. Okay, so next on we got the flex. So to indicate that we got the sensor connected and we can just print out the data from it. Second flag is to indicate that we are done with the transfer. Uh, at this point you don't really have to check uh, if you got uh, the correct transfer or not. You can check it with the flex right here by comparing the P event uh, that points to the type. So something like uh, if P event pointer to type equals something like this. So the correct answer. Then you uh, select that it is all correct, if else then something else. Uh, but however, uh, this is uh, okay for this example. Next on my function, uh, to use the callbacks in a more blocking way, which is sometimes uh, needed to prevent uh, transfer overrun. Next on we got uh, 
the function to set up the interface so the structure that holds up the address for the uh, hardware instance the registers a internal uh, index and the uh, pin numbers so this is the p010 for the clock and the p09 for the data uh, next on the 100 kilohertz frequency for the transfer the default priority for the callbacks and uh, additional features as uh, uh, we don't hold up the bus if it's uh, not initialized and uh, we configure the pins that we declared here okay and after this we can just simply initialize the instance the driver uh, by doing so so the folder for the instance the configuration and our handler which was right here the fourth parameter uh, you can add uh, as the description of the transfer but it's not uh, really needed so you can just type in null and it will work fine and uh, now uh, as we use callbacks and we got uh, Zephyr running here we have to also link the interrupt and uh, to do this uh, we have to do a few defines and link the interrupt so um, as you would use a different instance I got this define here. So I'm using the first instance, so the define of the index is also one. If you use the second one, you will uh, have to uh, put right here two instead of one. Okay, so after we link the interrupts for the callback, we can enable the uh, hardware and uh, for the showcase how you do the transfers. Uh, first, uh, we send uh, one byte uh, to the device that points uh, to the who am I register. Uh, we zero the uh, transfer complete flag, uh, initialize the transfer and wait for the transfer to be complete. And after this, we read one byte from this address and uh, after also receiving the transfer here uh, we check if the received data is matching the who am i register if it is true then uh, we configure the device so uh, to the this register we write zero and then we write to this register this value and after everything is complete, uh, we set up the flag for uh, transferring the data through the USB port. Okay. So let's take a look at our main function. So we set up the hardware here. And in the infinite loop, uh, we toggle the LEDs. And in our uh, sleep function, which is here uh, we get data and uh, go into one millisecond of sleep so the getting the data is done right here so if we got the sensor connected uh, we create a, a description for the transfer that does first the transfer so the primary uh, buffer is uh, the data that we want to read from so the start address of the x axis so after the transfer we do a receive so the second uh, buffer is pointing to the container that we got from the for the uh, received values for the axis 
and we want to read uh, six bytes. And uh, right here we do a non-blocking approach. So if the transfer is complete, uh, we do a another transfer. And if it's uh, still not complete, uh, then we zero the uh, don flag. So this is pretty much it for uh, the non-blocking mode and uh, now we can uh, do a little bit of a mix-up and uh, do a blocking mode instead. So instead of the handler we type in null. Uh, we have to command the section of the linking to interrupt for the callback and uh, move the data printing to the function that grabs the data And in the configuration section, we just simply remove the waiting for the flag. And now let's build it. Okay, so let's flash it. And it works just like before. Okay. So now let's uh, return to the non-blocking boot. Okay, so let's build it again. Let's flash it. And it all works fine just like before. In the non-blocking mode. So, thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful in your projects. And see you in the next one.